So, now extending this Cauchy Schwartz uh, inequality for functions. So, we have the inner product of two functions f t and g t over the interval a b the square of this is basically less than or equal to the integral from a to b f square t d t <coughs> times the integral from a to b g square t d t. Now, we have derived this Cauchy Schwartz inequality and then the what we did for vectors we can say when this function uh, it, it uh, when for these two functions the Cauchy Schwartz uh, inequality achieves equality we can say that for uh, g of t is alpha times uh, f of t this this holds that means we are scaling one function uh, by the other function right this is for reals but for complexes there is a trick which you will have to do and uh, since I have assigned this as a homework you can see through the details. Now, let us start with this notion of this inner product of x and y and considering the inner product of x and y can this be a measure of some relationship between x and y this is a question. So, to ask um, you know what is the relationship between x and y in terms of inner product. So, let us consider the norm of x plus y square right. So, x and y are basically vectors uh, in R n and they all have real entries right we start with this premise. So, the norm of x plus y square we expand this as the inner product of x with x plus the inner product with y with y plus 2 times the inner product of x with y. Now, if the inner product of x with y is 0, then we will end up with the norm of x plus y square is basically the norm x square plus norm y square recall that the inner product of x with x is basically norm x square and inner product with y with y is norm y square right. This is just for your recall inner product the norm of x square is basically the inner product of x with x and the norm of y square is the inner product of y with y. So, when the inner product of x with y is 0, then we land up with norm of x plus y square is basically norm x square plus norm y square. And this is our familiar Pythagoras theorem which indicates that x and y are at 90 degrees to each other. So, this inner product has in some sense the notion of an angle embedded and that is what we are going to formally look into. So, this is the other quantity one if you think about vectors they have magnitude then there is also an angle between these vectors and we want to associate them ok. So, let us look into the notion of angle between vectors. Now, the cosine of the angle between vectors is basically the inner product of x with y divided by the norm L 2 norm of x and the L 2 norm of y and this is basically the induced norm. And we know that 
cosine of this angle is between minus 1 and plus 1 right. So, therefore, we can say minus 1 is less than or equal to this quantity is less than or equal to plus 1. Now, if the inner product of x y is 0, this implies x y or orthogonal that means, they are at 90 degrees uh, to each other. Now, can you think about this where x and y are essentially random variables and if you want to establish this notion of orthogonality, what can you sort of extend this naturally to random variables. So, I think we have a sort of a framework now with all these vectors I think we start off with the definitions of vector spaces looking into subspaces then we looked at what the norm is then LP spaces right and then inner products right and an inner product space is essentially a vector space which is endowed with an inner product right not all vector spaces have to be endowed with inner product. If you endow a vector space with an inner product it becomes an inner product space and in in signal processing we will we will need this uh, very heavily. And with this notion of now we have learned the notion of orthogonal vectors right and to think about orthogonal vectors we had to define this inner product without which things did not make any sense for us right. Now, with the notion of orthogonality we are ready to define what orthonormality is. So, the idea is very simple basically if the norm of this uh, um, so basically you look at vectors that are orthogonal to each other and then the norm of each of these vectors is 1 then that means they are orthonormal and you want them to or to have orthonormality because when you think about expanding a signal using the uh, signal basis you want to go in the direction of the basis certain amount of coordinates right and 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 therefore if you want to go in that direction you want to set that to norm 1 otherwise you really not go in this direction right. If I say it is a vector 2 i plus 3 j I know the norm of i is 1. So, therefore, since the norm of i is 1 the unit vector i is 1 I can go 2 units along along i, along i right I mean 2 i is basically 2 units along i. So, this gives us this notion of orthonormality right. So, to formally define things a set of vectors p 1, p 2 so on till p m are orthonormal if the inner product of p i with p j is delta i j for pairs i and j easy to verify right if if i is not equal to j basically this is this is evaluating to 0 condition for orthogonality and if i 
and j are the same this is basically delta i i which is 1. So, you are having this this measure. So, this is very useful this notion is useful to get a sense of length along the basis. For example, if I think about as I told you before 2 i plus 3 j right that means, in this plane since the norm of i with i is 1 and inner product of i with j is 0 inner product of i with i is 1 and j with j is 1 2 i means basically you are translating two steps along i and you are indeed translating three steps along j right and if it if it is not norm 1 then you will have trouble in defining things because that is the reason why you have to normalize. So, I think these ideas seem intuitive. So, I think with this let me give you a short exercise here a small problem that you can examine. Examine if P naught of t equals 1 and P 1 of t equals t are orthogonal over the interval minus 1 to plus 1 just check if this result is true I mean this is very straightforward just look at the inner product of these functions over the interval minus 1 to plus 1 and then um, cross check. So, that gives you sort of an idea um, how you can extend the notion of orthogonality for, for functions 